Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about ways to select color in Photoshop. Now, that might seem like something you already know how to do. Like, for instance, we've talked about the keyboard shortcut that allows you to pull up the color picker. And then you can change the color, hit OK, and you're good to go. There are other ways that you might like better, but may have just never tried. So the first one we're going to look at is the color palette, and that's in the window menu. Now I have mine selected to show Hue, Saturation, and Brightness sliders, HSB, and also a grayscale ramp. And you can customize this in different ways, but I find this to be most like the way I think about color. Now what this allows me to do is just have an interface on screen where I can tweak relative color. So let's say I have this orange selected here, and what I want to do is make it a little darker. Well that would be brightness, or value. So here I can actually just drag this arrow down a bit. The hue stays the same, so does the saturation, but what changed is the brightness. Okay, so what if instead I wanted to keep the brightness the same, but lower the saturation? Well, I can do that here. Or I could even change the hue and make it green. Now if this is a little too small for your taste, you can actually just stretch this window out. And now the bars are a lot longer, and what that allows you to do is have a little more fine-tuning ability because the percentages are just sort of larger on screen. Because when I'm painting, I'm always thinking about color in relative terms. Like, say I wanted to add a little reflected light onto this ball here. I'd probably start with sampling the color that's there. Then I'd open the color picker and maybe, you know, raise the value and lower the saturation and then hit OK. Well, with this on-screen indicator, I can do the same thing, but I never have to open up a window. So I would start with my basic color, I would raise the brightness with this arrow, lower the saturation with this other arrow, and then I could start painting. So really it's all a matter of preference, but it's nice to know that this exists. Okay, now I know some of you out there are saying, well, I don't want all that clutter on the screen. I want to focus on painting, and I don't want to worry about user interface. Well, if you're not afraid of keyboard shortcuts, let's hide the interface. And I'll select this color to begin with. Now, if you hold down Shift, Alt, and right click, you temporarily get this, what they call a UI color wheel. And it actually starts exactly at the color you have selected. So here I'll show you a dark, desaturated color. There I am in the sort of lower region of the color picker. And we'll pick this high saturation, high value orange. And there you see it immediately jumps me to the upper right hand corner. So if you're thinking in terms of relative color, this is awesome. So say I wanted to start with this blue and make it a little less saturated. Well here I just move it a little to the left and let go. And now I have my new color. Well, what if I want to make it a little darker? Same deal, just pull down and then let go. So this allows you the benefit of relative color moving, and you don't need any interface at all. Only for that moment that you're using it, make your quick color adjustment, and then you're ready to go. Now this might be a little too hardcore for some of you, but I find this to be extremely useful. And there's even ways to customize the way this looks in the settings. If, for instance, you want it to be a color ring instead of a hue strip. So hopefully either of these ways will just give you a few more options to modify color the way that you want to, because really what you want to do is just focus on the painting and not really let the interface get in the way. Thanks for coming to Control Paint, guys.